Good morning, beloveds. So I think Foster, I've gotten Foster in the habit now where I'll call him at around nine and he'll come in, sit in here with me when I do the live stream. So, uh, it's nice. It's nice. So a little ritual that we have. Okay. Um, it is September 12th. Our title is wide awake. Our first quote is awake, awake, Put on thy strength. And that is Isaiah 52, 1. The next quote is, We know by intuition that there is something beyond what we have so far consciously experienced in this world. And that is the Science of Mind text, page 465. So long as we are unaware of our true identity as God's creations, we are asleep as surely as we are asleep through each night. It is no wonder writers and poets have compared earthly life to a dream. In a dream, we can feel every emotion just as fully as when we are, we are awake. And often in dreams, we sense that things are not right, but we are at a loss to clarify during the time we are dreaming. When we wake up, we are relieved to know that it was all a dream and that we are back to our real lives. The same thing occurs when we realize our oneness with the source of life. From that moment on, we are empowered by a strength that we have never known before. We see that we are much more than we had than we had thought. We find meaning to all life, not only our individual ex ex existence. <laughs> existence. Uh, Henry David Thoreau wrote, "To be awake is to be alive." If every person in the world were to awaken to the divine presence within, there would be an enormous shift in the way life was lived. If we who are aware of the indwelling I am were to live every day fully conscious of God within us, the world would change dramatically. If we know our own value, if we love our neighbors as we love ourselves, if we see the Christ in every person, we can, as James Thurber suggested, no longer look back in anger or forward in fear, but around in awareness. May we wake up and live. I know my life is the life of God. Today I am wide awake. I am aware of the animating spirit within me and all people. I live each moment com conscious of this great gift of life. Thank you, God. I, I suspect that this is one of those that it would be a good idea to take into meditation. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it would be because I, I have an interesting relationship with the divine, uh, just as I have an interesting relationship with dreams, uh, because I am what they call a lucid dreamer. I know I'm dreaming. I know I'm dreaming. And therefore, when things are happening in the dream uh, that I would prefer them to not happen, because I am aware that it is dream, I can change that. I can say, nope, we're not doing this. Um, we are, we, we are, and, and I did, I had one weird dream this morning and it got a little scary and I went, yeah, no, we're not doing this. <laughs> um, and so that's kind of where I am at with uh this life it's like i'm a lucid dreamer i am aware on some level that there's more than this that there is something beyond uh because i've talked to god my entire life and carried on as if i was getting answers because i was um and i think while, yes, some of the answers that I've gotten from God have definitely come directly from the ego, um, I can tell the difference. And when I'm not hiding from myself, you know, I will act on that difference. Um, and so I'm aware that there is something more. I, and, and I'm willing to make the effort to connect with that which is beyond. Now, do I live my whole life that way? No, <laughs> because one, it would probably make me crazy. And two, um, I, I'd end up in a psych ward because people would think I was crazy. 
I, uh, well, more crazy than they already do. Uh, and so there's this, there's this balancing act that we walk, but there's also, um, and that's the point of the mystic language is because there's no way to explain in everyday language what that experience is like. Uh, you sound crazy when you try and talk about it. The only people who truly understand are people who have also had that kind of experience. Um, so when we read uh, mystic writing, we get it. We're like, no, 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 I get this. I understand where this is coming from. And so that is what, what we seek. And what we are always seeking is, honestly, is that mystic experience, that connection that shows us that there's more. Um, and it's kind of like, if you believe in magic, you'll see it. But if you have to see it, if you have to see magic to believe it, you'll never see magic. Um, and so we walk this world in this dream state. Uh, now, most of the time I walk through this world and deal with it on that surface level. And then there are times when I don't. And there are times when I choose not to. And there are times when I am called not to. And so when you find that, when you find those times when you are called to deal with this world on more than a surface level, um, it's, it's crazy making, but it's okay. Uh, especially when you get to the point that you choose to do that, which is what a lot of spiritual practice is. Um, treatment and meditation and all of the spiritual practices, their goal is to bring you to that state, that aware state, that awake state, that there's more. So that when you look in each other's eyes, you see that back of which looking back at you. Um, you are aware that there's more going on and you can tap into that. And that's what her, her middle paragraph is about. Uh, the same thing occurs when we realize our oneness with the source of life. From that moment on, we are empowered by a strength we have never known before. We've plugged into that inexhaustible source. Do we still get tired? Yes, because we forget that we're plugged into it and we have a tendency to step on that hose. But each time we realize that we're plugged into that, then we take our foot off that hose and a little bit more flows in and it gets easier and easier and easier each time we do it. That is the point of spiritual practice. Okay. It's like we're, we're constantly standing on that hose. We're always connected to God, but we're constantly standing on the hose. And so the point of spiritual practice is to remind us we're standing on the hose and to, that we can let our foot up. And that's the cool thing about it is because we are standing on that hose. So if we need to step on that hose to deal with the situation, we can. But if we need to take our foot all the way off of the hose to deal with the situation, we can. Once you have tasted that connection you're never going to be satisfied with the with just the material world again and that's the truth you'll always know and you'll always seek and i'm not going to say chase i'm not going to say chase because that that leads into a mania um but you'll always seek that connection and you will seek to make it deeper and it will look crazy to people who are unaware of that, the world that we live in that's below the material surface. It'll look crazy. And the more you seek it, the more okay you will be with people thinking you're crazy. You'll be okay with it because you've got something that they don't have. It's something that they could have but they have to be willing to look below the surface. Um, we see that we are so much more than we had thought. We find the meaning to all life. She's ambitious here. We find the meaning to all life. Maybe we find the meaning to all life, but we definitely find the meaning to our life. 
And once we find the meaning to our, our life and understand that our life is so much bigger than we thought, we see the meaning to life, which is to have experiences. Um, not only our individual ex existence, as she says. And then she quotes Henry David Thoreau, uh, to be awake is to be alive. Um, somebody else may, it, it has a quote and I don't know who it is. I'll have to look it up. Um, it may be, oh, who was that? Oscar Wilde, um, that some people never live a day in their life. How sad would that be? So I, I would encourage you to become a lucid liver, not just a lucid dreamer, but a lucid liver. Seek that connection with the source of your own being. Recognize the connection of all life, how we are interdependent, how we need each other. Because we all come from the same source. We all go back to the same source. And we all live with the same purpose from that source. And one of the ways that you could state that purpose is the simple word of love. That's what we're here to do. We're here to love ourselves. We're here to love each other. We're here to love life. And there's an infinite variety of ways to do that. So... Um, I would agree with Ernest Holmes. We know by intuition that there is something beyond what we have so far consciously experienced in this world. There is something and we know it. And we've been standing on the hose. So all we got to do is pick up our foot. Okay. So her, uh, uh, did I tell you this was Jean Anderson? Um, I'm the lawn care people. They're not, they're my next door neighbors. So, probably should get out of this so that it's not too bad. All right. I know my life is the life of God. Today I am wide awake. I am aware of the animating spirit within me and all people. I live each moment conscious of this great gift of life. So the mission today should be choose to accept it. Hmm. All right, I'm going to take her line here. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to live every day fully conscious of the God within us. And how do we do that? I would have a suggestion for you. Create an anchor. Take something that you are going to see a lot of. It can be a piece of jewelry that you deliberately choose. It could be something that you know you're going to see multiple times a day. Um... And every time you see that, think that you're fully conscious of, hang on, what did she say? Fully conscious of the God within us. Okay. I wanted to make sure I had her word, wording right. We are fully conscious of the God within us. And as we come, become fully conscious of the God within us, we will become fully conscious of the God within all of life. You will not look in another's eyes and not see God looking back at you. And it changes the way you treat people. And other living things. Because I'm not talking just about two leggings. I'm talking about four leggings. I'm talking about six leggings and eight leggings and no leggings. And, you know, it'll change. When you can look at life, all of life, and see God looking back at you, it's a whole new experience. So, live lucid. Live lucid. Uh, all right. Uh, so then the other one is the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Um, it might look like taking a deep breath before you speak. It might look like taking a walk. It might look like taking a, walk, uh, a nap. It might look like taking a day off. It might look like enjoying an amazing meal. It might look like meeting a friend. Um, and having an amazing conversation. It might look like taking time out to read an amazing book. And it doesn't have to be sacred literature. It can be just for fun because we get stuff out of that too. So take the time to be loving, to be kind, to be compassionate with yourself. As I said yesterday when I did the closing prayer, be gentle with yourself, especially when you're processing stuff. 
Um, especially when you're processing stuff. You deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. You are a beloved child of God. You deserve that. Practice on yourself. And as you practice on yourself, you create a bank. A bank to draw on so that it becomes a habit. It becomes a default setting. It becomes a first response. And when you meet people that need a little extra, you've got, a, you've got enough to share. Practice on yourself. Um, and I would encourage you, as I always do, do something to engage your mind and your body. Drink plenty of water. It's super important. I know we're looking at the low 90s finally here, but still, water. Hydration. You'll think better. You'll live better if you're hydrated. Um, and, and then I'm going to lean on my science here because hydration is science. And so is getting early in your day bright light. The early in your day bright light will help reset those circadian rhythms and you'll feel better. It'll improve your energy. It'll improve, it'll improve your sleep. So, you know, take care of yourself. Self-care is super important. And then... I swiped this from Ernest. I don't even know if it was last year or the year before, but I love it. Open the windows of your soul and allow the breath of heaven to remind you. You can live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around you all the time because it's an inside out job. Happiness is an inside job. Heaven is an inside job because it's a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. It means that we have that superpower where we can create it around us from within. Connect with the source of your own being and everywhere can be heaven. So take Emma's advice. Look for the good and praise it. It's a good place to start. All right. Um, I have a sneaky suspicion he's about to get really loud really fast soon. So see, <laughs> check out your social, check us out on the social medias. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. Uh, and I am the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. You want to know what's going on with the center? Email info at creativelife.org. That'll get you on the constant contact. And um, it'll connect you. Because uh, the, the hot links in, the, in that are hot. There are book studies. There's about three book studies going on right now. A um, couple of classes getting ready to start. Uh, and yeah, there. So um, I think that's what I know. So I'm going to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a magical day, an enchanting day, a fantastic day, uh, a wonderful day, a lucid day, an awake day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased and well represented. You're doing a good job. All right. You're doing a good job. Take it one day at a time and you'll be fine. Uh, okay. So Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I know he's in Europe, so I don't know how he's managing to do this, but we make these commitments. Uh, I will be back with you at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Um, and then Wednesday, all bets are off. I may not be online on Wednesday because I'm having my other eye done on Wednesday, which is why you've seen less of my glasses lately. Um, because they're driving me crazy. Uh, so I'm going to have my other eye. Uh, the, I've had the cataract surgery on this eye. And we're going to have the corrective surgery on this eye. And we'll go from there. So um, I'll be back with you as soon as I can. But I will see you tomorrow. All right. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time.